So welcome to another war game review from the Players 8.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at Verdun 1916, Steel Inferno, one of the most evocative titles in war gaming. And with some of the most evocative art I've ever yes. seen. Yes. Uh, so this is a, uh, a French company, Fellowship of Simulations makes this. Uh, it's a couple years old, uh, and this is a two-player um, kind of... Card-driven. Yes, card because you have game events and you have ops about, that covers the Battle of Verdun mm -hmm. uh, in nineteen sixteen, right? It is. It, the, yeah, the, the, it's divided up into areas, and you have units that are kind of these wooden sticks, and there's trenches, and it is you know moving up hills, trying to take forts, it's shooting slug, your artillery. It's a slugfest. Yes, a meat grinder. Everything that you might expect, yeah. um, and it's. Starts in February of 1916 mm -hmm. and ends at the end of December of 1916. You play the whole of Verdun. Yeah. So if you play the whole game, it's an 11 turn game. Yes. Because e each of the turns, the numbered turns, have two months. Yeah, it's 11 which is months, kind of interesting. which is divided up into six turns. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Before we go any further, though, this is the first game this month in our mini Guns of August event. Yes. We are doing a mini. Or Not mini as M mini. in M-A-N-Y. We're not going to do mini titles. We will. Will we? We've we'll, said five. We're pretending to do a mini okay. one. <laughs> but, but this is our first game, right? This is the first one we've played together. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, that's I true. played Aces of Valor earlier. Spelled V-A-L-O-R. And then I also played Pursuit of Glory very recently, which I'm also including in this. Because I true. finished it in, in August, so that counts. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this is this is the first part of kind of our Guns of August that we're doing together. Yeah, sorry, I didn't, I didn't want to no, no, no. throw off the uh, shtick here, but I wanted to make sure that was clear. Yes, and we have definitely a few more good ones lined up. And oh, so yeah. this game came out a couple of years ago. Um, I don't know. I, this is kind of hard to get in the U.S. Or I'm, at not, least it I'm was not sure. For a you, while. I'm not sure you can get it. I had heard rumor that they're working on like a reprint, which I hope they do. And we'll say this right at this point. I think if a reprint comes about, I think the the rule book needs to be a little bit better organized. I would love it if they reorganized it. Reorganized, yeah. and then the play aids. I mean, this. I'm going to be honest. This isn't really much of a helpful. Play aid. No. This part of the play aid is helpful. These five events, two for the French, three for the Germans, are very important. Ultimately, this is a game about victory points. You are trying desperately, as the French, to keep it at negative victory points. And then as the Germans, you're trying desperately to zero or higher you just went, get any right? amount of victory points. Which I also think is very interesting that it shows 50. Now, I could see where you could get 50. It's going to be real hard, but if, though. But if you're anywhere close to that, I'm just going to concede. Probably over yeah. anyway. If you're at 30 or 40, it's like, okay. Because <laughs> I have two events where I can get like, what did we figure, 16 points? Well, you can mill the sum twice. Okay, so you could get like you 30. You that. could get 30 points. But milling the sum, very challenging. Not difficult. Not easy. There yes. are two generals you need to have played in your kind of tableau. There's some cards you play down and they stay for a couple of rounds. And then you have to have the Psalm offensive in your hand or have cards to discard to go fish it out of the out of the deck. So yeah, it, it's possible, but then it's a roll, right? Yes. You roll 2d6, there's really no modifiers. You roll low, it's two victory points. You roll high, it's nine. So, but it, it I think it's important. The game on the front says strategy game. Yes. And, but, I, and I would consider this a war game. Oh, without but, a question, this is a war game. But there's a lot of gaminess here. Yes. And the concept of strategy really revolves around you understanding your cards. Yes. When and where you need to play them. Because we talked about this after the game. There's a couple of cards for you. Flamethrowers was one. Mm -hmm. You have got to, in your first hand of cards, you've got to dis... If you don't have it in your hand, you've got to go get it out of the deck. Because it's that powerful, right? It adds one extra hit to each of your units in combat, flamethrowers, right? Then I had one that was a defensive one that only works on rounds one and two. It's a one-time shot. But my defensive guys, when I play that card, are gonna do three hits a piece. Talk about busting up an assault. Yes. That's gonna kill you, right? Maybe not, but you don't roll no, the yeah. hits on, on assaults. It's just a mathematical, Calculation. I do three hits to you. You absorb one to the trench. You take yeah, two. Knock, blah, knock blah, a couple blah, guys knock over. A couple, and, but I, 
I think it's important to understand this is a bucket of di- bucket of dice game with some random elements, and it's a strategy game, really. But it's a great game, nonetheless. This is a fantastic but game. All that being said, this is when you say things like, "Oh, it's a bucket of dice game," and all this stuff. This is such a nuanced and rich game. Oh, no doubt. Even us talking after we played this game, there is so much that you need to understand about your deck of cards. Yes. The more you play this, you will significantly get better at it. Mm -hmm. And Like many CDGs. Yes. Twilight Struggle comes to mind. We've played that 25 times, and I'm like, okay, I know what those cards are. So when I know I need them, I'm going to... I'm going to play them. This game, over something like Twilight Struggle, ha- adds that timing element to it. Yes. Because you know up front, all of your cards have a little um, time mm-hmm. code on it. I think that's what they call it. And So here, let's just show an so example. So those, those little dots at the bottom underneath the event, that tells you in which turns that card is playable. And so you're not only like figuring out, okay, this event is needed to trigger this one, or this is a good thing for this. If you draw that card, Mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I need to now hang on to this. I can't waste the ops on it because it's so strong in turn three. I have to hang on to this for a couple turns. How many times? How many times did you do that? You think? Um, At least once. I did it with at least a couple cards. See, I never held a card over. Interesting. Because. Some of my cards that are really powerful require like three cards to play them. You have to have a couple generals. So I was like, chances of getting those are going to be pretty low. I also had a delusion that I would one day draw a good hand of cards. Yes. That would all be usable. Very difficult. And I like that part of the game because that to me is a very good simulation of what's going on here. The other thing about these cards though is you mentioned... The dots at the bottom tell you what turns they can, you know, this one says five and six. So that means that's the end of the game. The last four turns, you can play this card. You can play that card for the event in those turns, but these ops up here, which is four, that's a good number. You cannot use those ops. Yeah, this card is like useless, useless. to you in it, the first the, four the turns The only of the game. use it is, is to pair it with another card, potentially that's useless. Typically. You discard those two cards, you go... We called it fishing. Yeah, so you search your draw deck. The draw deck. To get any one card that you want. And put that in your hand. So, and that's where we talk about, there's a lot of nuance to this. Because you have to know your cards to be able to know what you're fishing for at that given time. What's good, what's not. I had to hold on to my Russian offensives card because Mm -hmm. I had it at the beginning of turn four after I had just reshuffled my deck. So if I'd have thrown that away, I wasn't going to see it the whole rest of the game. And yep. so I needed those victory points. So I had to sit on it the, both months of turn four and then turn five, I'm like, I can finally use this thing. Sure. So some of those things, the, the timings of it, what the events do and when and where, that's going to come with experience where yep. this game has so much depth to it because of that. Well, and, and to me, that's a, really, that's a great hallmark of a good game. Yes. Something that I can you know, play, play once and enjoy, but play three, four, five times where you start to understand the cards and the strategies and all of a sudden it becomes a completely different game. If we played this again right now, it would be a very different experience. And then we're going to switch sides. Totally different game. Absolutely. Totally different game. Different cards, different focus. The the other thing that I really liked about this game, and I enjoy bucket of dice games. I I always have. There's a good feeling about chucking a handful of dice. When you roll an 8 or 10 or 12 dice, or 16, like you did a couple of times, that, 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 that's fun. It's and great. in this game, the part I really liked about the dice was sixes were exploding. Which you love to I mean, you love to see that in a game. It's just and, fun. And, man, early on, I think you rolled I was rolling four or five sixes. So then you would roll four or five more dice. Sometimes you were rolling sixes again. And it was a little bit demoralizing, but I was like, holy hell, that's awesome. If Yeah. That you, was really cool. A few times you can get it to go, it's like, whoa. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Well, it gave me hope that one day I might better from that. I will say this. The, I do enjoy the asymmetry and the, the makeup of the decks. Oh, yeah. So the Germans, I felt like your first, second, and third turn barrage cards were really powerful. It's, especially one and two. Yeah, like the first 10, two turns, 12. Was, you, and, and that's just it. 
it, it has this great narrative, that arc of this game where yep. it's like very, very, very strong, and then it's like, oh, it kind of oh, falls off yeah. a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and you also, you as the Germans, got 10 cards the first turn, correct? Yeah, the very first turn in February. So you, you had 10, I had 8. So there you had two more cards. Now there's seven card plays, so you have 10 cards. You are you may not play three, but some of those are also responses or... Or, or you're much freer to do the double barrage yes. where you play two barrage there, cards. That was very fun. Because yes. then that could be countered. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, I've got a 10 and I've got an 8 barrage card. Do I do this and go ahead and roll 18 dice for fun? But I looked at your hand and you had like five cards. And I'm like, surely he's got a 6 yeah. or an 8. Or, or do I use one of those to neuter your barrage? Sure. And, and it, it just that's an interesting nuance. It's great card Kind play. of a tactic. I, I just think there's a lot to like from... You know, the fun dice rolling, to the cards, to the way it works. And even the situation here on this front, from the get-go, Germans have three units in every space, and the French just had one. So yeah, immediately I'm like, oh crap, I'm, I'm in trouble. But I could sac sacrifice a victory point for each dude, and I could call up to three reinforcements, so I'd give you three victory points, and put three reinforcements in the unroot box. Or you and you or you start off with your um, that card that gave me yeah the sacre or whatever it was castle no, and then that unlocks the capacity to get the roads going where you get the twelve three well, reinforcements. So playing that, but, the, but it's the time, right? Yep. It's the great it's the great story of like <laughs> I gotta get it, and then yep. then you get them out, and it's like okay, okay, let's hold yep. the line. We can stop panicking now. And those twelve reinforcements that I got for free didn't cost me victory points. Yep. All I had to do was use ops from a card to strategic move, and they move in groups of three. So I had a four ops card I played, and I moved all twelve all of those dudes. And do they have to go to the same spot? They couldn't go to no, contested they, spots, yeah, but they could to be spread friendly out. Controls. So I kind of spread out and had two to three guys in almost every space. And, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, I was breathing a little, yeah. little easier. But that was fun. That was a, a almost a challenge in and of itself to get those two cards aligned so that I could play those quickly to get to get basically the finger in the dike. And that and that's and that's uh, again I'll come back to the this game, like, that was fun to experience that. Yeah. But that happened probably later on than you may have wanted. <laughs> oh, no, no doubt. So, like, next time we play this, you're like, It'll oh, be... I have to go and get that card as well yeah, yeah, yeah. and get that out ASAP. Yep. Instead of waiting until next. Because I think I did that in, in turn two. In turn two. I needed like, it in turn one, really. But the other interesting thing, you know, we, we played we played all the way to the second month in the fifth turn. So we were in October, Right. We two, ended three, four, in five, October, six, seven, yeah, because I had conceded. So we did nine of 11 turns, and th the reality is if you see this front, you took one, two, three, four, five. You took five spots and then had two contested. A, a, a die roll here or there, or uh, me not getting a card, you would have punched through and... Well, or it, if I'd have been able to roll on the Battle of Jutland... Yeah, well, but I canceled then, that Then one. you have a card that cancels that. That was awesome. But there's a potential to pick up 10 VPs from yep. that. Yep, There's a potential to lose 5 VPs. Yeah. But I, I could have got something out of that. And VPs are an important part of the game. They come from controlling certain areas. What were your cards called that put these one... Um, so they made it was, a... It was like the Kaiser visits. Okay. So those cards made, and it had to be a French-controlled French territory. French-controlled. So you couldn't have just taken over a territory and then did it. You had to do it when I was... Now, contested, you could do it. Mm -hmm. As long as you controlled it. So yeah, the Kaiser shows up, and he's like, hey, uh, this I'll, is a victory. go take that village. And yep. you're like, okay, we'll go yep. take that village. Yeah. Now. But I, then, I thought that was good. Um, did those cards go out when... Yes, they yes. did. So there were two of those? There or? was two of those, yeah. Okay. That was interesting. Um, one of them you actually got. The other one we... This was hilarious. Well, I, I, and that's what's fascinating is, is like... Not hilarious, that's a bad word. But. Well, I, I put it in the area that was already contested, but it was very, very heavily contested. Yeah. And so that was a mistake. Sure. N having seen this play out, I should have done what I did here. Yeah. Where I'm like, I'll go put it somewhere kind of puny. Yep. Then I can smash it. Yep. 
and I would play that at the end of a turn where I know that maybe you can't counter that as badly. Sure. So I'm like, sixth card, put that out. Seventh yeah. card, big barrage and assault and try to take it. Yeah. And no, then, you're, you're and right. And all of a sudden, it looks different on, on the yeah. board. Yeah, yep. But yeah, I put it somewhere had, and we slogged over it. Had you got every those... Every battle for, yep. for like seven rounds. Had you got those early on, I think that would have made the game much more competitive, the VPs wise. I, and and I need to mention this, the one of the goals of the French is to get the US into the into the war. Yes. And the only way they can do that is the one card in their deck. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but US Diplomacy, I think. US Diplomacy. And you had to play it. It's a straight up 2D6 die roll, but you can discard cards. And for each card you discard during that roll only, you add a plus two DRM. So when I got it, because if you stay in the the bottom, where is it? Where, the zero. Uh, the zero spot, that's negative 15 VP <laughs> at the end of the game. That's yep. going to lose you the game. You, you'll lose every game with that. Absolutely, because you can never go higher, higher than negative 15. Whether you got 10 VP that turn or not, you can only go to negative 15. So... Doing that, and I think the turn that I did it, and ironically, I ended up rolling, I think it was a nine, a five and a four, but I added plus eight to that, so I blew it away and moved up to the one position, which was only negative five, which made it so that, okay. They wait until 1917 to show yeah. up. <laughs> but it, 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 wait, it, it got me to the point where, okay, I won't automatically lose. I now got to fight to keep these victory locations, but I liked that. But there was a part about it I, I didn't like. What was that? That was the submarine warfare yeah, so, in total. So my, my co contribution to that as the Germans is that I had these submarine warfare cards. and Two of them, right? Yeah. So there's submarine warfare and there was total submarine warfare. And when I play those, that turn, the French player discards two random cards. Yeah. Which... In the right situation, that could be very devastating. And then you get a permanent plus two DRM to yep. that roll. So every roll in the future is plus two. Now, you're only going to have that roll maybe three times. But most you the, can get it three times. There's really no way to get it any more than that because you can't... The French have no way of reshuffling their deck. You can't get through your deck faster. Yeah, there's... What are there, 40 if, cards in if that If you deck? had US Diplomacy on the first turn, you're going to get it again probably like turn five. around four or five. Or maybe three... End of three, three beginning of four. Then, then you if might. you blew through your cards yep. on purpose, you might get it turn six. Yeah. So but, that would be potentially three opportunities. But you've also been doing a lot less on the board. Sure. And so... Because you're focused on that. Well, my other one, it was like, you discard two cards, and it changes the plus two to a plus three, which is, again, why would I do that? You discarding two cards... Yeah. Is not that important. Generally speaking, because it's at random, Yep. So it's very likely you're going to be discarding cards you couldn't have used on that crap, turn anyway. Crap cards. So I'm like, the incentive for me to use this isn't strong enough. No, and, and I think that's, when I saw you, I think you had those like three times and you never played no, them. No, I just, always use them for the ops. And they gave four ops. That's the other thing. Like, I think this one I? gave four, the other one gave... If it gave one ops... Yeah. And then, then all of a sudden then, it might be and like... it was like, gain two VP instead of ditching a yep. card. All of a sudden... Yeah, There's of course I'm going to do this. Yeah. Of course I'm going to do this. And I think that's my only problem with that part of the game. I I felt like there was no incentive for you to do it. No. Therefore, there was no way I had to do everything on that. And it is very challenging. Very challenging. But in the end, it ended up working out. And it is a big difference going from negative 15 to ne only negative 5. Yeah. And if you can get it up to level 3, it's actually a plus 5 VP. For but, the US. but again, but that, to get it there impossible. is almost you're you're I, gonna I, I get it never, to two if you commit yeah, to it, but three maybe. Is you, you're having a laugh. So that was interesting. We, we talked a little bit as we were playing and at the end about how does this game compare about another game that we played on Verdun, Fields of Despair from GMT Games. We both said bucket of dice, World well, War One. That's at a much bigger scale as well. It, 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 it is. So the only similarities they really have bucket of dice and, and World yeah. War One. The other one uses Fields of Despair, uses blocks. This uses blocks, but it's totally different, it, right? It, it, no it, hidden it's information. Like it's, yeah. I, it, it just, there's no comparison. I know somebody asked me on Twitter, and I, I really see very little 
real the, comparison. The comparisons are: it is very tough to make progress. Yes, and which is indicative of you. Very done. You, you, you will. Yeah, like, or you'll make some progress, yep. and then all of a sudden, you'll grind to a halt. Yep. You won't be able to refresh your guys as the Germans as you expend yourselves, and your cards will betray you because <laughs> they get you weaker had over time. Very good at the beginning. Yeah. Very bad at the end. And the way they get bad is it's a deck destruction game in some ways. When you play an event that has a yellow text, that card goes out of the game. So a lot of those, like, what was that one card where the it wasn't the Kaiser, right? But the guy had the human skull on his oh, skull yeah, and crossbones. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was a 14. Such a very powerful card. Funnily enough, he stayed in the game, I think. Did he really? Yeah. No way. But he could only do that 14 during turns one and two. Oh, okay, okay. So Maybe you'll never did. get to do it twice. But I mean, that was really powerful. Yeah, I we, I had him again. we also yeah, kind of... But yeah, he only oh, gets yeah, his 14 didn't... in turns oh, one okay, and two, okay. so it's not, you don't die, die. But I mean, l l look at that. Are, are we the baddies? Yeah, You know, that, that famous uh, YouTube <sighs> meme, but I, there's a lot to like in this game. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed that it was a game. I enjoyed that Great. there was a lot of tension. Lots of real hard decisions about what I... The only other thing I look think I... freaking artwork. Oh, it's amazing. Turn it on the back. That, I th well, the back of the rule book. The back of the I, rule I thought book. that was a very grim... Oh, yeah. But it's isn't that what it was? I mean, even the flamethrowers. Like, it's not a nice, pleasant no. game. But I think, once again, that adds to the immersion, the thematic element of the game. I, there's just a lot to like yeah. here. I will really show enjoyable. you how this game works, and then uh, we'll wrap with a few final thoughts. So here's a look at the map. Um, as you can see, you've got here um, kind of... The, the topography and geography in and around Verdun, um, and you have um, this big old line of German troops and trenches, and a big old line of French troops and trenches. Now, do not judge where they are positioned. <laughs> uh, uh, this was a uh, heavy, heavy defeat for the Germans. Uh, and lessons were learned, it was very interesting, that's for sure, but you can see the map is divided up into these areas, um, and the blue line is the river, uh, it's a muse, but you also it is it also acts as a dividing line between two areas as well. Um, there's a couple of tracks which you can kind of see a little bit off to one side here, and there's some holding boxes over here for like troops and reserves and things like that. But um, effectively, this is a card-driven game where you'll have a hand of cards and you can play those um, for basically either one or two of a couple of effects. So, there's two different types of cards. G uh, generally, here, let me get a couple of those here. So, um, so these are these are the French the French deck, the blue deck. There is kind of a field green or a field gray um, German deck as well. So, there are two types of cards. You're going to hold them in your hand this way around, but uh, some of the cards are oriented in a portrait fashion, and all of those say barrage on them. And then they also have a number, and they also give you ops as well. Um, so, just looking through this kind of French deck, this is a very large barrage with six dice that gives you three ops. This is a very, very big that gives you four ops as well. Uh, but the other condition for these cards is is that this is the or, um, these are the turns in which it can be played. The little red is when it can be played. So, yeah, this is a really strong French card but it is a late game card. If you have it in any of these five turns, you can't do anything with this card. Um, it's useless to you. You're gonna be discarding it to try to fish up other cards. Uh, so there's lots of barrages. Uh, so you, you're just looking through, you can see there's a lot of those. Uh, but there's also a lot of these events, and the events are um, oriented in a portrait fashion. And once again, they also tell you this can be used on turns two, three, four, five, or six. You can't use it in turn one, because that's white and not red. Uh, and then it also gives you an event, which you would do, and then you would get this very small amount of ops. Or, you can ditch, you can ignore the event, and just use the very strong amount of ops on it. Uh, what's really important to know is that this, for example, this card, you can't use it on turn one, you can use it on turn two, uh, and, and every turn beyond. But, you don't reshuffle your deck that often. Um, I think... 
in a two in a full campaign game, you will reshuffle your deck twice. Um, uh, but the likelihood of you getting through everything the second time is is less likely. So you're going to get through everything once, um, and then shuffle, and everything again, and then after you reshuffle that last time, that's going to be at the very end of the game, so trying to fish for things after that's going to be, you have to really go for it. It's, it's, you can't bank on getting things around a third time, if that makes any sense. So, uh, what do you do with your ops and your barrages? Well, barrages, quite simple, you're going to chuck this many dice at a specific area, and you're going to try to try to kill guys, basically. Um, events do events. Um, they're kind of self-explanatory. Uh, the You know, hey, get some victory points. Or, uh, you know, uh, Joffre, you know, French player, uh, lose loses one front morale point at the start of each turn. That's not great, but you combo that with the Somme Offensive, and the Somme Offensive can get you a significant amount of points uh, if you roll well on that. Um, so, with those you just do the text. So, with the ops that you have, uh, funnily enough there isn't a play aid in this game, which is very frustrating, but the ops can be used to um, recruit guys, uh, although when you recruit guys um, and you call for reinforcements, you actually take a, uh, a victory point penalty. Uh, the, the amount of guys you bring on, you take a victory point penalty, so be careful when you do that. Or you can move guys around on the board. Uh, you can do tactical moves where you're just going to move kind of three guys. The stacking limit's three, and we're all pretty much maxed out at this point, but you could move a guy. Uh, you know, this guy can move here. Uh, well, he can't actually pull out because he's engaged in combat, but moving guys around, right? Um, you can do strategic moves, which is where when you've got reserves that have come onto the board, you're going to put them out. Or if you wanted a guy who's not engaged, he can kind of like basically move anywhere to that's not engaged. Um, so you can kind of swing guys around everywhere as well. Um, or what you're going to be doing most commonly, it felt like, is... When guys are laid down, it's because they're exhausted. They've taken a hit, um, or something else has caused that to happen. You're going to spend points to stand them back up again, basically. So th that's effectively what you're going to do with your points. This is a, ga a, lot, a game that's a lot of doing an attack, people are going to lie down, and then standing them back up again to try and go again. And you're trying to do that at a faster pace than your enemy can keep up with, Think about attrition, right? It's attack, 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 until you can break through. So, um, what does attacking look like? Well, the interesting part of this is that you can only ever um, launch an infantry attack on the back of a barrage card. So, what you can't do, like every other game, we're engaged in this area, I can activate these troops to kind of go over the top and fight. The only way to do that is by doing a barrage and before you resolve the barrage, saying, hey, these three guys are going to go over the top of, as an infantry assault after the barrage. And you don't have to commit all of them. You can only co you can decide to only commit a couple of them. But uh, that's something that you have to kind of abide by. So you're going to commit all your troops. You're going to roll your barrage. And if you roll really well, good for you. But if you roll really poorly, your guys still go over the top. Uh, and, and I love that part of the game. It was, al it was always a, an element of a gamble. You never quite know. Because um, if you roll badly and you guys go over the top, you're going to get absolutely rocked. Uh, and that, and that's, that feels like the kinds of things that would happen around this period. So I, I really appreciate that part of the game. But uh, you can see we've got absolute stacks of dice. Partly we have a ton of dice because you can play... Um, two barrage cards at the same time, if you were so inclined. So let's get a couple of these. Yeah, let's see, what are the German ones? The French ones aren't that great, if we're all honest with ourselves. Do we have that big French one that we had? What do I do with it? But you can play two uh, barrage cards together and add that many. Here we go. So let's say it was turn five or six. I, as the French player can play a maximum of two. You can play just one. We can play two barrage cards that can both be played in turn five or six, and we're going to roll ten and six, sixteen dice. Uh, that, that is a significant amount. 
So that's why we have so many dice in this game. The game comes with like 10, but two, four, eight, 12, 16 dice. That's how many dice you're gonna chuck at someone. It's gonna do a lot of damage to people. So you say, okay, great, we're over here. I'm gonna go ahead and do this big old barrage and I'm gonna launch a French infantry assault uh, against the Germans. Wonderful. Now, if you play just one barrage, um, that's what's gonna happen. You know, it would either be like a six or a 10. Whenever you play two, it's kind of going all out. The opponent does have the opportunity to try to do counter battery fire. And so what they're gonna do is they're gonna look at their hand of cards. And if they have a barrage card that can be played that turn, they can play it. So let's say I had this card as the Germans. I can't use it for counter battery fire because it can only be used in turns one through four. Uh, but if I had a big one that could be used at the end there, let's see, do I have any that can do that? Uh, where's me Germans at? Most of their barrages are like early or mid game, which I think is very interesting. Here, let's, oh, that's a French one. Well, I don't have any offhand, but basically they're gonna play a barrage card. Well, and if it can be played during this time, they're gonna subtract this many dice from it, if they can and if they want to. So th there is an option where you don't get totally overwhelmed, but that's still pretty gnarly. And let's say that the Germans just don't have that, or we'll just, we'll just roll and kind of see what happens here. So you're gonna chuck all 16 of these dice. We're gonna, was this one of them? I'm not gonna really count. Uh, we're gonna declare it in this area and we're gonna declare an infantry assault. And then you're gonna roll your dice uh, and you're looking for hits. And anytime you have uh, f fours, fives, and sixes of hits, oh my gosh, that was a terrible roll. Uh, so we got some hits and then we also got a six and a six gets re-rolled, uh, it's exploding. So we're just gonna roll another one. And I rolled it into a three, so it's nothing. So we, of all those dice, we only did this many hits, which is not good. Um, and uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign this many hits. So we're gonna go one, two, three. The trench absorbs another one, four. And then you have to do an additional two hits uh, once a lying down guy has been assigned two hits, you're gonna, you're gonna, he's gonna be dead. So he, they're gonna take extra hits and they're gonna be sat there. So you have to do an overwhelming amount of damage to eliminate lots and lots of guys. What you're hoping to do is maybe eliminate one guy and then next turn eliminate another one and then you're gonna have a much better chance at this. So now what we're gonna do, after we've done a little barrage like that, now we're gonna resolve our infantry combat, which again, you cannot back out of. Uh, if you did a bad job with your barrage, um, your guys are just gonna be hosed. There's nothing you can do about it. Because the orders have already gone down, the whistles have been blown. So uh, there's no rolling in infantry combat. It is a fixed number of hits that you're doing. It's, de it's deterministic. So each standing up uh, attacker does one hit. Each lying down defender does one hit. If you have standing up defenders, those do three hits a piece. Very, very bad, uh, don't do that. Um, so you're, we're gonna do three hits. The first hit is absorbed by the trench. And then we're gonna assign another two hits. Boop, boop. We needed to do more hits than that to eliminate a guy, unfortunately. As I know that's gonna happen. They're gonna do three hits to us. We're gonna lie three guys down. And that's the end. And what I will tell you is, is unless you get some good rolls, or if you can whittle guys down, or force guys into areas, or attack where there's maybe only one guy a piece, it's very difficult to make uh, significant progress. Um, can be very, very challenging. So, all, we did all that and everyone else lied down. And that was the French turn. Well, what the Germans are gonna do on their turn is they're gonna play a little card, they're gonna use some ops, and guess what? They're gonna stand these guys back up. And then when it comes back to my turn, I can't afford to get attacked by this. So the French are then gonna spend their turn, they're gonna play some ops, and they're gonna stand their guys back up again. And we're gonna rinse and repeat. And in significant battles, that can happen regularly, but also it's partly um, 
a trap. You can see what's happened here is this is exactly what we did. We fought over this base every turn and every month uh, for the whole game. And that was a wild mistake. I, as the Germans, should have been doing other things because this was a resource sink and it didn't go anywhere. Now, you can only know that in hindsight because if I'd have made a breakthrough there, uh, the French would have been in a lot of trouble, but I needed to do more elsewhere to distract away from this and then come back to this later, I think. But, you know, that, that's the beauty of this game, is that you can sink a whole bunch of resources into a place and you'll get that World War I microcosm. But there's so many options for like doing a maneuver here and like overloading uh, and trying to attack this stuff. There's no victory points here, but if you can break through down here, now you start, like the French have to totally readjust at that point and there might be weak spots that open up elsewhere in a line and you're gonna attack and try to take advantage of that. Because this is a game where the first half, the Germans have to make progress and generally speaking, you're trying to get like down in this area of the board where there's these black numbers, which are victory points. You're trying to take this. This is really important to take, which I didn't do. And then threaten this like here. And because you can win automatic victory down here if you, if you can get that far. So the French are trying to defend, 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 defend. And then in the late game, five or six, um, then they start to do significant counterattacks to try and swing those points back um, in their favor. But that's loosely how the game works and what we'll do is we'll wrap up here with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the map. Um, I had a blast playing this. Oh, this is this very is interesting to kind of learn and figure it out as we got along. And I think the more we got into it, the more the game kind of opened itself up and yeah. was like, oh, <laughs> yep. this is really, this is intense. Or like, oh, I have to consider this and this. And there's all sorts of layers to this game that revealed itself, uh, yeah. which was just fascinating to see. And I, I very desperately want to then just like set it up and play it again. Oh, no doubt. Because like you said earlier, Totally different game. Yep. Totally different game when you play it again. So the other thing I wanted to point out, I think tactically, this game has a lot of interesting ups and downs and an evolution of things, right? On the World War I front in the trenches, people, it was a meat grinder, right? Sides fought each other for very little gain and lost <laughs> equipment and men yes. and morale and spirit. And as I look across here, we, we, we ground each other into dust over here. And we were talking over one victory. Yeah, point. over one victory point. But it was funny because I was looking at this throughout the game, and I'm like, at the top here in the German areas, there are French victory points. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if I can somehow control those locations, now that's very, very hard to do. No, but if I can, if if I go down here and I overstretch yep. myself, I have to be very careful about very that. Very careful. Because if you counterattack, yep, you're going to pick up a ton of points. And, and I, I remember we were talking kind of near the end of the game. And I'm like, okay, I, I, what, what if I threw like an eight or a 10 barrage card at this area where you had one dude and only one trench, right? And I did an assault. Let's assume I had three dudes in there. I'm probably going to kill everything you've got there with the barrage. And then I'm going to walk into that area. No victory points, but then but you're threatening oh, four. Sets me up to four right there. And let's assume it's late in the turn and you don't have much that you can really do, man, all of a sudden I could walk in there and get two to four victory points and that would be game changing. But then also I, you're overstretched. I, I open myself up. And then up. Yep. I cut your supply. It, it, th yeah. That's the great thing about this game is yep. that this, all of that stuff, there is these carrots that yep. dangle you away like I desperately want to, but you really, really, really have to maintain your kind of tr line no doubt. integrity no doubt. to an extent. I think in these kind of games though, and I'm, I'm guilty of this, I become, my vision becomes myopic. I see something I want and I'm going after that the whole time. Or, or I think this place is called Orens. Yeah, right? we, should, we should have abandoned that. But, I should have abandoned that. But we fought over it every, every month, every, multiple every month. times. Yep. We would barrage each other and then assault, do enough to make us all be exhausted. And then the next turn, I'd play a card that stood my guys up and you would play a card that stood your guys up. And Zero then, lessons were learned. Right. right. And, Not and a single lesson. Isn't that the thesis <laughs> of World War I? At times, yes. Th there was nothing gained, although they fought over this stuff inch after inch, right? 
but it, it's it's so interesting in these kind of games where you have a static front. I feel like I do get focused, hyper focused on one thing, and I kind of lose sight. Um, it, it, interesting, but that uh, also another hallmark of a good game, right? Multiple yeah. things to worry about, multiple things to think about. This game has a few issues, right? I mean, we talked about the submarine warfare and the uh, American diplomacy. To me, that's a little bit of an issue. Player aids, a little bit of an issue. Give, give me some real players, yeah, people. Rules were a little bit of an issue, but not. We were able to the, figure them yeah, out. Yeah, the rules were just organized in a way that wasn't necessarily the most intuitive. Sure. So, like, if you're trying to reference them, trying to find what it yeah. is you're looking for isn't great. Production, I think this game's beautiful. Yep, stunning Looks pieces, great. stunning artwork. S some of the best... This artwork is very similar to... Uh, what's that card? The Grizzled. Game? The Grizzled. It is a is different the, artist. But same kind of style. But it, yeah, it's a similar type of style. You're right, similar style. I, I love that game. I love playing it. I love the way that game looks. I love this game. I love playing yeah. it. And I love the way this one looks. So bravo, Fellowship of Simulations. We've played, I think this is the second or third game of theirs we've played. Yes, yeah, something like that. Um, I think we've played. Wars of a Religion France was one I, I really enjoyed. Yeah, it was the same issue. The gameplay was really good. But, but some of the production. Let it down. But and, the production of this is much better. Well, and the game I have, Napoleon's Conquests, I'm very excited about it that. It looks good. Now, that's a, a Euro-like historical theme game, but I'm still interested in playing it. We need to get six people together and we need to play it. Yeah, it's up to six player. <laughs> okay. You can do less, but we, we got to do six players. Yes. So uh, if you don't know Fellowship of Simulations, they're a French publisher. I think Philippe Hardy is the owner. I'm going out on a limb and saying that. Um, check them out. They, they have some really good games. I think Fred Serval would agree with us uh, on that. Um, you, there's if, several good friends. If you publishers. can get a hold of this, get you it. should do it. Trade for it. Noble Knight Games probably has this. Yeah. Um, if and like if they ever do a second edition or if oh, you see this available at any kind of reasonable pick, pick price, you should get this. I thought I heard rumors of one being developed. But I would love for them to do that. And if they yeah. can get like a, a large part of like US distribution, sure. They would make it more widely available. Definitely do it. I understand why they don't, but yeah. also like this is excellent. Oh, yeah. This is... We, we didn't talk about some of these other things. Uh, there's air superiority. Yeah, if, it, if it's on your side, you're going to get certain bonuses right. depending on how far on your side it kind is. Kind of interesting. Um, th there's lots of lots of things to this game. I, I loved it. Yeah. I actually really loved it. Everything's a bit of a back and forth. Yeah. A ton of attrition. Nothing's yep. easy. Everything you want in a World War I And game. It, it feels like World War I. It just feels like World War I, so... Very pleased with how this turned out. I enjoyed it greatly. Can't wait to play it again. Yes. And frankly, starting off our mini, once again, M-I-N-I, -I, mini Guns of August I think we just August call event. it Guns of August, and it's just a regular Guns of August. It's just What we did last year was months. a maxi Guns okay. of August. It was stupid. It's, it was no. We played 14 don't, games. Don't do dumb, that. Dumb. That was two years ago, by the way. Yes. We I'm, didn't do it last it year. It took us 24 months to recover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, first game... Of a five it's or a six was, game. This is a banger. Really good. And I think last time we started with... Lamps are going out? Last time we started... Paths of Glory. No. Those we played later on. The first one we did, I'm pretty sure, was... Um, oh, no. Uh, da, 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 da. It was... Uh, it was it was the CSL game. Ah! Uh, Cotet... Villier, yeah. or something like that. Via Cotteret or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something I can't like that. Yeah, was, yeah, that was a great little game. Th that was the Very first cool one. little game. Okay, I remember that now. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. But yeah. Had a great time. You, Loved it. This is a game that will probably never leave my collection. Well, and I'm like, how do I get a copy of it? Yeah. Now, I, I don't think you can play this solo. We talked about that. Sure, you could two hand it. But the concept behind it is not understanding what's no, on your opponent's there's, cards. There's so much detail in what you can or can't do with your cards. I yeah. don't even know if you could reasonably do it with the CDG solo method. Yeah, you could I, try it. but I don't, I'm not sure. But Get a friend. There's not a mod yet. Get, get, get your a spouse, friend. get a kid, get your cat. Maybe That's, you can play this game. And it's going to be the business. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, Verdun 1916 Steel Inferno. Check this out if you're interested. Big thumbs up. But appreciate you very much for tuning in. I'm Alexander for the And I'm Grant.